We do barak you, call all Yisraya, those that are gathered here with us at Teshua, and those that are viewed that are listening by via of live stream tonight. We do ask the Berakiah upon you all. Hallelujah. What a beautiful time for Yisraya that we can join together, that we can come together in unity. As the scripture that I read before, it should be as the oil or the precious oil. And it should be poured upon the heads of Yisraya and even run, run down the, our faces unto the beard and even unto our garments. So the rod of Yahweh should cover us all. Hallelujah. I want to begin speaking tonight concerning the vision, the Mahaza, the vision. What vision do we have, Israel? What things are we pondering, things that we are imagining? What are we looking forward to? What are we setting our hopes upon? What is the future? What is our future? Do we know? Do we still have those today that have the vision? Don't you know without a vision, us, Yisraya, as a people and as a nation, there's no hope. We shall perish. So there has to be a vision. Is there not a vision for this so-called United States of America to live the American dream, to have wealth, to have land, to uh, start young and become old and have riches stored up? Is that not the American vision or the American dream? What is the dream or the vision for Yisrael? Is it for us to store things upon this Olam, upon this earth? To build bigger barns? Is that our hope and our aspirations? Or should we put our treasures and our hopes in the Shemayans? Hallelujah. Where moth and rust cannot corrupt it. Yisrael. What is our hope? What do we desire to accomplish and to be in this present life? You have those that aspire to be football players. There are even those that do not have the physique. But yet, they take the steps to strive to accomplish the dream or the vision that one day I'm going to become an NBA player. You have those that want to be in, uh, play basketball. May not have the height, may not have the speed, but yet it's their vision and it's their dream to be a basketball player. So what do they do? They practice day by day. Do they not? They take the right vitamins and whatever should sustain the body to make it strong that they can endure running up and down the court. And even though you may look at that person, there's no way that one could be a basketball player. He turns out to be one. She turns out to be one. Or whatever the aspiration is, if we put forth the effort, if there is a vision, there has to be something that we can look to to pattern ourselves. There has to be something, Israel, that has to be seen and understood beyond our physical eyes yes. and our physical understanding or understanding of the flesh, Israel. What is our vision? What is our hope? What is our aspiration? Don't you know that even in the Chronicles of Torah, that there were those, the prophets, the Nabi, that were sitting visions from Almighty Yahweh? And don't you know not all the visions of the prophecy of that which was fulfilled was all blessings. There was also curses. Sure they were. There were also famines that was prophesied and visualized. Why? For preparation, Israel. Don't you know when the Torah of Yahweh is seen rough and edgy and it cuts us as for our preparation? We should not be a people that desire just smooth things. We won't to be lathered down and feel tough. We want to be comforted and massaged in our present state, which our present state is very lowly, conditions of Yahweh. We're not the overcomers that we should be. We're not the visualers or the visionaries. What is our purpose? What are we trying to obtain, Israel? What is our vision? 
So as I get into this message concerning the vision, even of these last days, where should we be? Judge and live, O, o Yisrael, yeah. as I begin reading. I want to begin initially Proverbs 29, verse 18. Hallelujah. Yeah. This world has a vision. You have those that risk even their very lives of themselves, of their families, of their partners, their friends, to cross the border to get to this United States, hoping for a better life, maybe to make enough to send back to their families, to acquire education. They risk it all. The little monies that they may have to cross the border, the people that even die just to make it here. Why? To seek this vision or this American dream. But this is not what sustains you, Israel. Right, Don't you know that Yahweh says that I have a future in store for you, Israel? Yes. I have already set each table. Everything's been set already. All I need you to do, Israel, is to obey. The vision is already there. It's already ready for us, Israel. But it says here in Proverbs, Mishli, chapter 29, verse, 10, verse 18. He said, where there is no vision, no malakha, no vision, the people perish, the people fail, the people fall. We're not able to press on. We're not able to endure. Why? Because as the old saying will go, we don't see the pie in the sky. We do not see the riches and the wealth and the beautiful things that Yahweh has in store for us, Yisrael. Yes. So without a vision, it says, the people perish, but he that keeps the Torah. Do we keep the Torah? Are we striving to obey what Yahweh has written? Are we obeying what Yahweh has written? But he that keeps the Torah, it says, happy is he. Happy is he. His joy is made fulfilled. There's no room for anything else. There's no room for riches. There's no room for wealth or for physical possessions. Why? Because he is full. He is happy. He is content. Are we happy, Yisrael? Turn around and look at your neighbor. Do you see contentness and happiness upon the face of your ark, upon the face of your hope, Yisrael? Are we obeying the Torah? Do we see the vision? And there is a vision for this end time, Yisrael. Turn with me to Lamentations chapter 2. I want to begin at verse 1. Lamentations, which is basically a cry unto Yisrael. That even at the rebuke of Yahweh and the judgment of Yahweh, we should turn, Yisrael. We should turn. We should shoot. We should turn from our physical state. And make a complete turnaround. Because many of us, let me correct that, not many of us, but we are going as a nation the wrong way. We're seeking the wrong things. We have the wrong vision and our foresight. We're in the broad way and not in the narrow way. So let me begin reading here in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. He said, how has sovereign Yahweh covered the daughters of Zion. He has truly covered us, Yisrael, yes. with a cloud in his anger. Oh, yes. Why is his cloud or this dark cloud covering Yisrael? Yes. Why is Yahweh angered? Let me read on. And cast down from the Shemayims to the earth the beauty of Yisrael. Oh, yes. Where's the comeliness? Where's the beauty, Yisrael? Sure. And he has remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Why is he angry with us, Yisrael, as a house? Have we pursued the wrong things? Are we going the wrong direction? Verse 2, let me read on. Sovereign Yahweh has swallowed up all the habitation of Yaakov and has not pitied. He's not going to pity us, Yisrael. We're not walking according to the visionary or the visual or his vision. For the house of Israel, yeah. we walk it against the Torah. We despise the messengers of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. We seek to kill the life which He has given unto the messengers, yes. unto the ark, unto the occult. Yes. He has thrown down His wrath 
the strongholds of the daughters of Yahuda. He has brought them down to the ground. Is that where we are? Yeah. It's not Torah yeah. truth. Yeah. It's not every word established. Yeah. He has brought them down. He has pulled the kingdom and the princes thereof. Verse 3. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel, the strength. That thing that rise up, it shows a power of defense. And not even not only defense, but an offensive power. He has broken that horn, Israel. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. Are we falling back in rank, Israel? Are we fighting this battle as tough soldiers? Are we fighting this battle, Israel? unto the death as a warrior would fight this battle? Or are we falling back? Are we retreating? What has happened? It says here because Yahweh has removed his right hand from before the enemy. And he burned against Yaakov like a flaming fire. What could be done that the wrath, that the anger of Yahweh could be so hot against a people that he ahava? Will he destroy Israel? Will he wipe us out? Don't you know that's what destroy is? Mm -hmm. It is to wipe out, yes. to make clean, to purify, yes. to purge. Yes. He's against Yaakov like a flaming fire, which devours round about. I'm talking about the vision tonight, Israel. Yeah. What is this vision of the end time? What are we walking into or walking on? Is it the bar of Yahweh? Or is our own fleshly aspirations? He has been his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary. He said, if we be contrary to him, he's going to also be contrary to us. And slew all that were pleasant in the eye of the tabernacle of this daughter of Zion. Are we not Zion, Israel, that abides in the tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh? He poured out his fury like fire. O oh, sovereign Yahweh, has, was an enemy. O oh, sovereign Yahweh was as an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her places. He has destroyed his strongholds and has increased in the daughters of Yahuna mourning and lamentations. And he has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He has destroyed his places of the assembly. Yahweh has caused the Shalom feast and Shabbat to be forgotten in Zion. Is that not true, Israel? Are we just, if I may say, getting back into the swing of things, the way things should be? Don't you see how, because of the sins of Israel and the nation, that Yahweh has taken away these things in his anger? But you know, this, this feast is for the uplifting. It's Yah's feast, but it's for the building of the house of Israel. Why? That we may have a vision of the things that are to come. This is a joyous occasion. Hallelujah. We should give Torah unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Even in his judgment, Israel, even as dark as it may seem, there is still light. There is still hope for Israel. Well, who is that hope? What is that hope? That hope is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Did not he have a vision, Israel? If he didn't have a vision, if the Torah of Yahweh was not laid out, there would not be any hope for Israel. Yahshua HaMashiach, he would not have been able to stand the course. But because he saw beyond his present being, he knew what was aforetime. Do we know what's aforetime, Israel? He was able to what? To endure. Yes. And not only to endure, but to overcome. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We should be overcomers yes. by the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Yes. Verse 5. Servant Yahweh was an enemy. Let me, let me move down. Let's do verse 6. Read verse 6. He has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He has destroyed, wiped out, destroyed his places of the assembly. 
Yahweh has cursed the Shalom feast and the Shabbats to be forgotten in Zion. He has despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the Kohen. My, my. As we read on this right, y'all. Verse 7. Sovereign Yahweh has cut off his altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. He has given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her places. My. Given up to the enemy the walls? Yes, yes. The protection? What protects us? What protected Yahweh? Yes, yes. Did he not have a head or a wall about him? The Torah? Yes. They have made a noise in the house of Yahweh as in the day of a Shalom feast. Yes, yes. Yahweh has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughters of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has drawn a line, Israel. Mm -hmm. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he made the rampart and the wall to lament mm -hmm. and languish together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. What happens when gates sink? They cannot move when they're buried. They cannot be shut, Israel. He has destroyed and broken off her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The Torah is no more. What has happened to the Torah, Israel? Is it no more? Does it yet still abide in our living, Israel? What is the vision? What is this end time vision, Israel? What are we looking forward to? Has it been prophesied unto us? Has it been revealed? Her prophets also find no vision. No vision. No vision. Yes, Through all this, Help me, if you even look back in your own life, Israel, yes, this, even in your distress, even in your pain and your heartache, yet there was something that we could grab on, hold on to, a hope that we could grab on to. Even though it was cloudy, and we did not understand exactly what it was, but it was the hands of Yahweh upon us, Israel. So what happened when there's not a vision? What happened when the hope of Israel has been removed? I just read what happened. Destruction. Yahweh wiping us out, purging his house. Hallelujah. Bringing us down to nothing, Israel. I'm going to read that again. He says, her prophets also find no vision. So even through all this, if there was a purpose and a vision, even in all this, Israel could have withstood. But because they denied the Torah of Yahweh, they turned their backs upon Yah's reproof. They did not come on to Yahweh. There was no vision. There was no hope that was given unto Israel. What is our hope, Israel? Yes, yes, yes. Has it been taken? Yes, come on, man. What do we have? Seemingly, we don't have very much, do we, Israel? Hallelujah. But rest assured, even the little, that a Sadiq man, now we must be Sadiq, yes. not in our own righteousness, mm -hmm. but in the righteousness of Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. the scripture says that is, that is more than all the riches mm -hmm. that the world has to offer. So her prophet also find no vision from Yahweh. So there must be a vision, Israel. Must be. There must be a vision. There must be a higher aspiration sure. than what we think we want to accomplish. Yes. It has to be what Yahweh has in store for the house of Israel. Let us move right along. Until the 22nd chapter of Melchim. I'm sorry, the first chapter of Melchim, the 22nd verse. 1 Kings 22 and 1. Hallelujah. That's where I want to begin. You know, we're something as a people who don't want no one to critique us unless it's in a form of exaltation. We're people that we don't desire to be a base or to be lowly. We want to be always of a high mind on a pinnacle that we do not see what really lies beneath. Or what is in the depths of our living. Yeah. So we won't prophesy visions that are smooth. Smooth things prophesied yeah. to us. We want Yahweh to 
give us a vision that of prosperity, which he does. But there's no prosperity when we walk contrary unto the will of Abba Yahweh. So I'm going to, I'm going to begin reading in 1 Kings, 1 Millicam, chapter 22, verse 1. And they continued three years without war between, between Syria and Yisrael. And at this time, the kings were battling. Wars were taking place. There was fighting. There was kingdoms taking kingdoms um, to siege. Verse 2. And it came to pass that in the third year that Yahushaphat, the king of Yahudah, came down to the king of Yisrael. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Know you that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead and to and Yehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. So he is agreeing, yes, I will go with you. I will stand with you. And Yehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, inquire, I pray you, at the word of Yahweh today. Now, do we inquire of the word of Yahweh? 99.99 times out of 100, it's not what you think it is. Sometimes we believe we're walking in the Torah of Yahweh and we're doing the will of Yahweh. But because our sins and our iniquity have blinded our eyes, we find ourselves out of his will. We find ourselves walking, walking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? With a zeal and with a zest, but not according to knowledge. So there has to be one with a vision that we can follow Yisrael. Let me move on. Verse 6. Then the king of Yisrael gathered, what did he gather? The Nabi, the prophets together. And who are these prophets? Who are these Nabi? They're either of Yahweh or they're not of Yahweh. So you must understand this time, this is a time of purging in the house of Yisrael. So there were Things that were not right in the house yes. that had to be straightened out. But yet there was one, mm -hmm. Nabi, yes. that they did not like. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what we need, Yisrael. Yes. We did a Nabi that is against us. Yes. You do not realize, Yisrael, it's not always the things we believe that are for us. Mm -hmm. Because even when, when the prophet or the Nabi or Yahweh is against us, yes. he is for us. Yes. Yes. But that don't sound right. Yes. I know it doesn't sound right to the flesh, yes. but unto the Ruach of Yahweh, Yisrael. Yes. If you listen by the Ruach, what I'm speaking, you will understand. Yes. We, must, we need a prophet, we need a Nabi yes. that is against yes. us, that will reveal our sins, yes. that will show us our downfalls. Yes. Hallelujah, why? What is the purpose? Yes. That we can be presented unto Yahweh without sin. Yes. Blameless. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, we won't those to point out the things that are tough or what we think, if I may say, that are good about yes, us. Yes. But leave those things that are not very cordial. Leave those things alone. Yes, that's no, Yah, he's going to stir the pot. Yes. And everything that is in that stir the pot is going to be whisked around you, Israel. Yes. It's going to all come to the surface. So let me read on. So the king of Israel gathered the prophets together. About 400 men that's a lot of Nabi. Sure Does it take 400 for the house of Israel? It only takes one. Sure. It only takes one true Nabi for the house of Israel. And he said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And what did they say? They said just what he wanted to hear. Yes. And they said, Go up. For sovereign Yahweh, now they're using the name of Yahweh. Yes. But sovereign Yahweh shall deliver it into the hands of the king. Right, and Yahushaphat said, Is there not a prophet of Yahweh besides these? That's all right. That we might inquire of him. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to not be. Yeah. 
We need a prophet Yisrael that he may give us this vision from Almighty Yahweh. That he may show us where we are falling short. When we want to step out and we believe that this is the will of Yahweh, we need one that will make us judge ourselves. Search Yahweh. Get upon our knees and send out a palah, a true palah unto yeah. Almighty Yahweh. Not according to our desires or what we want or our will, but it should be only his will, Yisrael. Yes, yes, yes. Verse 8. And the king, the king of Israel said unto Yahushaphat, there is yet one man. One man. That's all right. There is one man. One. That's all right. One not be. Yes. You're not going to like him. Yes. That's all right now. There is yet one man, yes. Malachi, yes. the son of Imla, yes. by whom we may inquire of Yahweh. Amen. But I warn you, I'm telling you, but I hate him. Uh, that's all right. Oh, hate. Is that in the house of Israel? Yes. Do we hate the one? that shows us our shortcomings, that show us our downfall, that tells us, no, yes. that is not the will of Yahweh. Yes. No, that's not what the Torah says. Yes. Yes. We don't want to hear that. No, he said, but I hate him. Why? Because for he does not prophesy tough concerning me. He does not prophesy what I want to hear. He don't prophesy good things. These 400... They'll, they'll tell you anything you want to hear. They'll not be of Yisrael, but they're not the Nabi of yeah. Almighty Yah. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's all right. But I hate him, for he does not prophesy tough concerning me. But what does he prophesy? Right. What are you trying to tell me? Mm-hmm. But, evil. but evil. He prophesies evil. Don't you know, even in evil, there is truth, Yisrael. Yes, when the judgment of Yahweh come upon Israel is to correct us, for us to be corrected, and to see what? His vision. That's You're going the wrong way. Don't you know that's what we do with children, a child, those who didn't have children that take care of children, have responsibility of children. In their foolishness, they believe that they're doing right. Don't do that, Sarai, but, but daddy, no, nah, don't do that. Sippy, uh-uh. That's right. But in their eyes, they believe, you know, why? what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. But because I have the vision, sure. and I know if they keep doing that, that's going to bring the harm, sure, yeah. and they still persist, well, you know what happens. Sure. They get a tanning, as my avat would say. Hallelujah. Yeah. So what does Yahweh do? Yeah. What is he doing, Israel? Because he harvests us so much. Yeah, Even though his judgment fall upon us hard, Israel. Yeah. It's not to completely wipe us out. Sure, Sure, there's going to be those that fall by the wayside. There's going to be a small part out of the whole. 400, not be, and only one. one. Don't you know it's the same way with Yisrael? Don't let no one fool you, Yisrael. Yahweh's going to wipe his house clean. He's going to clean the house. So what does he want us to do? There's a vision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's go on and see what this vision that this Nabi is going to reveal to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But evil. And Yahushaphat said, let not the king say so. Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer. And he said, hasten hither, Melechiah, the son of Imlah. Yeah. Why? Because he said, I got 400 men that say go. I want to inquire of a man that are not as the same as these men. I want one that's going to tell me the truth. And don't you know they believe not the 400, but this man, Malachi? It might not have been what they wanted to hear. Oh, they believed it was the will of Yahweh, but not at that time. Not at that time. We want to rush Yahweh. We want to tell Yahweh what we want, what is on our mind, but it's not what he has for us as a house of Israel. Yeah. Anytime that you move so quickly to do something, yeah. it's time for you to slow down and stop. Yes, yes, yes. But I feel, but I believe, but now what does the Nabi say? Yes. 
What does Yahshua Aha Kohen? What does he say? What does the Torah say? Well, maybe I should consult a Zalkain, an elder in the house. Or maybe I should go see the um the Koheti, the pastor, the man of Yahweh that stands. Israel. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's going to give us a sure word. We must have one that's going to let us know what the Torah says. Let us know what Yahweh says. Even though it may go against our grain, Israel, it'll put us in the right grain. That we may walk this road smoothly, hallelujah, into the Melkut, the king of almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 1. Hallelujah. What are we waiting on, Israel? What is our moonah based upon? What is our vision? What does Yahweh have in store for us in these last days? Yes, yes, God. In the second chapter of Habakkuk, verse 1, it says, He said, I will stand up my watch. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, the watchtower, the high place that I may see clearly. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. Are we in that high place, Israel? Or are we down in the valley? You're not going to hear Yahweh clearly down in the valley, Israel. We must... Arise, we must come up into the high place of Almighty Yahweh. And what shall, and what shall I say? What sh- I'm sorry, and what I shall answer when I am reproved? And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision. Write the vision. That's all right. Write, the vision. Yes. Write down what I say. Write down this Torah. This vision, this word. And make it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads it. Are we running, Israel? When we read the Torah of Yahweh, are we running the right direction? Well, it's not what I hear we want to run. Well, you need to get up on the high places. You need to get up into the mouth of Abba Yahweh. But he told him to write this vision and make it plain. I want the house to understand. Write it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads it. That's one thing about the Torah. When we read the Torah, you're either going to run away or you're going to run towards Yahweh. You're either going to give up or you're going to press towards the Melkut of Abba Yahweh. Verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Don't you know there's a vision for an appointed time? There's a time and there's a season for all things. Well, it seems like Zarkin and Yaramia, there's so many things that, that we don't yet understand. Because it's not yet time, Israel. Don't you know there was a vision in the beginning of all things. And there also there is a vision at the end of all things. Hallelujah. So we need to depend upon Yahweh through his Nabi to reveal that unto Israel. And it says, but at the end, at the end, it shall speak. It shall be revealed. It shall be made known unto us, Israel. And it will what? Not lie. It's going to be of a truth. It's going to be concreted. It's going to stand strong. It's not going to waver. It's going to be of a truth and not lie. Bo and Terry, wait for it. Where's our patience, Israel? Are we waiting for this vision of the end time? Are we inquiring? Are we patient? Because, because what? It will surely come. And it will not tear. It shall not tear. When it's time, Israel, many times we want to rush you. Yes, yes. We want to get on with it. 
But it's not the appointed time. Why? Because we're probably, no, it's not we're probably, because we're not ready. So when we're ready and we're walking in Yahweh's Torah, in the understanding of the Ruach HaKodesh, then things will be revealed to us, the vision. And it will come by the Nabi. Hallelujah. It will come by the Nabi Yisrael. Because his nephesh, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But just, but the just shall live by his imuna. By imuna. By imuna, Yisrael. Are we just tonight? Are we justified by the dom of Yahshua, Hamashiach? Have we been washed? Have we been cleansed from all of our sins, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Let me, re- let me move on. Just bear with me, Yisrael, concerning this vision of the end time. Are we making ourselves ready? Are we making ourselves fit? Are we exercising our imuna? Are we making ourselves ready for this time that is at hand? You know, you must be ready to, whether it's um, a duty or a job, you must make yourself ready. You get up in the morning, you refresh yourself, you know what must be done, and you set your mind to do that. If it requires tools, you must get the necessary tools to do the job. There must be necessary preparations. And if the job is going to take more than an hour, than two hours, a day, or two days, then there must be what? A finish, a, a, a vision sure. to finish yeah. the job. Yeah. Don't you know that's why there are architects to make a plan, mm-hmm. to put drawings? You have your ideas, you know what you want, they put it on paper. They give you the measurements. There's a law and a statute that you must abide in, ordinances, is that not true? You can't go out here and just throw up a building now. They have building codes. Yahweh, he has building codes. And the Torah is our building code, Yisrael. And Yahshua HaMashiach, he has drawn out everything. So the plan is there. The vision is there. All we have to do is abide in it and walk in it, Yisrael. There's no, new, there's no room for new plans or new ideas. No, it's all there for us. Hallelujah. All we have to do is walk in them. Turn with me to Isaiah, Yisrael. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. Told the Yahweh for all things. Hallelujah. What is our vision, Israel? What is our aspiration? What do we desire to be? What, we, what do we desire to accomplish? What are we willing to fulfill, Israel? There are people that will bring their bodies unto subjection. And they can accomplish things that are amazing. Really. Acrobatics. People that can uh, perform tasks that the ordinary man cannot do because they have applied themselves. They took the necessary vitamins, nutrients. They eat right. They practice. They exercise. We must do the same thing, Israel. We must apply the Torah. We must eat the Torah. We must obey. We must walk in it, Israel. We must exercise our imuna that we can fulfill the dream, if I may say, or the vision that is ahead of us. Hallelujah. The wicked show us all the time that it can be done. And it can be done. We have Yahshua HaMashiach on our side, Yisrael. We can do all things through Yahshua HaMashiach. That should give us strength. The vision of Yeshaya, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Yotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Yehuda. It says in verse 2, Hear, O Shemayim, and give ear, O earth, for Yahweh has what? Spoken. He has spoken. The plan has been laid out, Yisrael. I have nourished and brought up children, bang, and they have rebelled against me. He says in verse 3, the ox knows his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people, 
Yes. Do not consider me. Why have we not considered Yah Yisrael? Why do we not consider the Torah? Hallelujah. Why we do not consider Yahshua HaMashiach and the shame that he endured at the stake? The dumb that was shed for our transgressions and for the cleansing of our sins. Do we consider him? Do we consider what Yahweh has gone through? Or we can play pity on ourselves many a time. What has Yahweh gone through? Hallelujah. What has Yahweh desired for us, Israel? Verse 4. Alas, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. We don't want to hear this tonight, do we? Hallelujah. We don't want to hear this tonight, do we, Israel? This is the Torah of Yahweh. Every word of the Torah of Yahweh is true. A seed of evildoers. See, this is the kind of Nabi we need. This is the kind of messages we need, Israel, to thrust us into the right path, into the Melkut of Yahweh. Don't you want to be ready? Don't you want to be ready, Israel? It takes this to be ready. It takes the cutting. It takes the hammering of the Torah of Abba Yahweh to make us ready, because we're not ready. Hallelujah. Without a vision, Israel, we perish. Where's the vision? How is Yahweh going to send the vision, Israel? Hallelujah. Yeah. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, sons that are corrupt, that have forsaken Yahweh. We have provoked the Kodesh one of Israel to anger. We are gone away backwards. I know it says day, but we are the day. We have gone away backwards. Why should we be stricken anymore? You revolt and continue in apostasy. Yes. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint, Yisrael. Give me Does this not draw a blueprint of us today, Yisrael? Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. See, don't you know even in a blueprint, yes. when it is drawn out and is laid, it is to be observed. Why? to find the kinks in the armor, to find the potential weak places in the plan. Yes. You don't want to build a building according to a plan and then find out, you know what, this is not going to work. You put effort, you put time, you put money into that, and it's not going to work. The structure will not stand. So the blueprint is laid out to practice on. Well, we're going to put this here and see how this pillar is going to hold up. Technology has advanced so they have a program that you can build what you want to build yes. and then go through the test, and that program will bring the test to see will this building or this format will it stand. And that's how many of the builders, the modern builders, are built today, Israel. But Yahweh has a plan that is more modern than anything that man can think of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is that, Zakane? You're looking at it. It's the Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we build by this, the building will never fall. The house will never fail. Hallelujah. But why? Because the foundation, it is sure. Why should we be stricken anymore? You revolt and continue in apostasy. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. It says from the sole of the foot. Don't you know that the sole of the foot is the foundation for which we stand on Israel? So the foundation, even from the sole of the foot to the head of the high place, there is no soundness in it. A building, can you imagine that? A building, it is not sound from the foundation to the top. Well, when the earthquakes come or the rain come, it is not going to stand. We should be built upon the solid rock, and that solid rock is Yahshua Hamashiach. Do you not recall in the Torah the man that built his house upon the sand and one that built his house upon the stone, Yisrael? What happened when the waves came? It washed the home away or the building away that was built upon the sand. It did not have a sure foundation. So let us be sound, Yisrael. There's no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, sores that pulse and that bleed. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither have they been mollified with ointment. Your land is laid waste. Your cities are burned with fire and your land 
in your land. Strangers devour it in your presence. Have we not seen that, Israel? Sure. Doesn't it seem like when the enemy is before us, he seems to devour what we have? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, it's a different thing to, to uh, be one that proclaimed that you are a strong one, that you stand upon the Torah. It's a different thing when you face the enemy. It's a different thing. It shows what's really in you. It puts you to the test. It says that the strangers, they devour it at our presence, the enemy. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers, verse 8. And the daughter to Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a, a lodge in the garden of cucumbers. What happened when there's a lodge or there's a place within a garden, when there's vines running and things? Well, the vines overtake it, Israel. A lodge in the garden of cucumbers as a besieged city. It seems like we are besieged, Israel. It seems like there's no way out, doesn't it? But there is a way. We must see the vision. What is this vision? This vision is Yahshua HaMashiach, Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Except Yahweh of hosts had left to us a very small remnant. Did I not talk about the 400 Nabi? And yet there was one? Don't think Yahweh does not downsize his people because he does. He cleansed the house. Is this the vision of the last times? Let me start over. Except Yahweh of hosts had left to us a very small remnant. He would have, we would have become like Sodom. And and we should have been made like to Gomorrah. Yes, sir, my friend. That, this right here in itself is a vision of even the last sure, days yes, of the house of Israel sure, yes. being downsized. Because if we were not, if Yahweh did not destroy, if he did not cleanse his house, That's we would have become right. like Sodom. Yes, it will. Did not say unless it was for a very small remnant. Why? What's the purpose of that? Yes. Because we would have been like Sodom and been made like Gomorrah, Israel. Yes. Let's move on to Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 14, verse 14. And there's a point that I do want to reach, Israel. Hallelujah. Before I bring this message unto a close. Hallelujah. Told the Yahweh. There is so much in this division, Israel. Now be multiple visions of the end time. Hallelujah. And it has to be given unto the people in simplicity. Whether it makes us run or not, Yisrael, it must be made plain unto the house of Yisrael. Genesis, Bereshah, chapter 14, verse 14, concerning Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken in captivity, again, this is a time when there was a lot of battling that was going on amongst kings, amongst, amongst um, uh, um, cities, villages. Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, and he armed his trained servants, those that were born in his own house. I'm going to use a word like, like they use out in the world. They, they had to been a bad, they, they were bad. You hear me? In his own house? It was bad. 318. 318 against thousands. And pursued them to die. And he divided himself against them and his servants by night. See, he knew what he was doing. He knew what had to take place with the few number of men that he had that he may overcome the enemy by night. And he smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the tubs. You think about that, Israel, all the goods. All the belongings. When we go out, don't you know we have to battle Israel? Do what do we bring back? Are we victorious? Yeah. Do we bring back the goods? Do we take back that which the enemy has taken from us, Israel? Yeah. And also brought again his brother Lot. Mm -hmm. And also his goods. The women also and the people. Verse yeah. 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of, of Chador Lamar. Yeah, 
And the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, yes. which is in the king's valley. And what do we have here? Yes, yes. And Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Do we know about Melchizedek, Israel? Yes, yes. A Kohen. After Almighty Yahweh. Yes. The king of Salaam brought forth bread and wine. And he was the co-in of the Most High, Yahweh. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, Yahweh, possessor of the Shemayans in the Olam. Wow, what a blessing. A messenger of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know that Yahshua was after the order of Melchizedek? And there's a little point I want to bring out, Yisrael, as I read on. And he blessed the Most High, Yahweh, which has delivered your enemies into your hand and gave him tithes of all. So he got a portion. We did. And the king of Saddam said to Abram, give me the prisoners and take the goods to yourself. And Abram said to the king of Saddam, I have lifted up my hand unto Yahweh, the most high, almighty, the possessor of the Shemayams and the Olam, that I will not take a thread even to a shoelace, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. That's beautiful. Verse 24. I like that. He only desired this. Save only that which the young men have eaten, right. and the portion of the men which went which went with me. Aner, yes. Eshko, yes. and Mamre, That's all right. let them take their part of their portion. So here, even Abram, he did not desire to take anything of the possession of, of that portion, Israel, right. from the king. Hallelujah. Right. But yet, don't you know that our king, Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. he has offered Riches and possessions unto the house of Israel. Yeah. We should not deny anything from Yahshua HaMashiach. We should take what he gives us, Israel. Well, what does he give us, our king? He gives us emit. He gives us truth, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't you brought Yahweh for that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's move on to chapter 15, verse 1. Yeah. And after all this, after Abram have gone out, he overcome the enemy. Don't you know we must overcome the enemy, Israel? Sure we must, and there's a greater enemy, or there's an enemy that gives us even more trouble than Satan, mm -hmm. because he has already been defeated. Sure. Yeah. It is this stuff right here. Yeah. It's the flesh. Yeah, it's yeah. We must destroy this flesh, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abram in what? A vision. He saw it, whether it be by dream, hallelujah, or whether he was taken, yes. saying, for not Abram. He said, I am your shield. Don't you know Yahshua is our shield? Yes. And your exceeding great reward. Yes. Yahshua is our exceeding great reward, Yisrael. Yes. So even after all these things, what took place? What took place, Israel? It says that the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision. Do we have the word, the Torah of Yahweh, cover unto us, Israel, in a vision? Don't you know we must overcome, Israel, this flesh, the desires and the lusts of it, that the Torah of Yahweh will come in as a vision? That we will understand and see that Yahweh provides all that we need. That we don't have to take anything. Here's our provider. Here's our protector. Here's our exceeding great reward. What is that? You tell me. A reward, that sounds enticing. A great reward, that's even better. But an exceeding and overflowing abundance. That's what Yahshua is, Israel. Hallelujah. An overflowing abundance unto the house of Israel. Told to Yahweh. Verse 2. 
And Abram said, Sovereign Yahweh, what will you give me? You said that you provide all that I need, overwhelming abundance. Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Elzar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no Zerah, no seed. And lo, one son in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, Does you know the word of Yahweh comes with us unto us tonight, Yisrael? Hallelujah. And it's saying, This shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir. Don't you know the Torah that which lies within us, Yisrael? It should come forth out of our bowels. Yes, yes, yes. That is our heir. That is what is the richest, Yisrael, that Yahweh has promised unto Yisrael, yes. his Torah, in our land. It should come forth with an abundance should. of zero of seed, Yisrael, mm -hmm. that there be no end to it. That's all right, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward the Shemayims, Tell the stars if you'll be able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your Zerah be. Oh, yeah. And he believed Yahweh, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Do we believe Yahweh tonight? Do we believe the vision that is set before us, Yahshua HaMashiach? Hallelujah. Do we understand what Yahweh is doing in this last hour, Yisrael? Hallelujah. And he said to him, I am Yahweh that brought you out of earth, of the Chaldees, to give you this land to inherit it. And he said to Yahweh, hereby shall I know that I shall inherit it. And he said to him, take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and the turtle dove, and the young pigeon. And he took him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And it says here that the fowls came down upon the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. Don't you know the fowl, the unclean things tried to come upon the offering that we tried, that we offer unto Almighty Yahweh to devour Israel. So don't think because we come over one hurdle. That the battle is over. We may rebuke Satan, the enemy, mm -hmm. or this flesh, yeah. but it shall try to come back, Yisrael. Yes. No doubt about it. And when the sun was gone down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a heart of great darkness fell upon him. And he said to Abram, Now of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. So yet, there still was a time, Israel, that this vision had to be, be fulfilled, this prophecy. Verse 14. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And you shall go to your avats, your fathers, in Shalom. And you shall be buried in excellent old age. But in the 14th generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is a continuous battle, Yisrael, that we must fight. There's an enemy that we must face every moment of the day, every day, Yisrael. But yet if our eyes are set upon the vision, upon the promises of Almighty Yahweh, and if we would wait patiently with a munah, then it shall come to pass. Yes. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. Because the word of Yahweh, it never, it never fails. Hallelujah. 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 Are you listening to what the Ruach is saying unto yes. the assembly of Israel? Beautiful. Beautiful. We must have a vision. There must be a vision in the, in the midst. There must be a Nabi. Hallelujah. That should tell us things that we may not want to hear. Hallelujah. That the things that are deep in our lives, that are not of Abba Yahweh, may be revealed. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on, Yisrael, as I bring this message to a close. Hallelujah. I have quite a few pages here. 
So as I've done in the, the past, I will revisit this. Hallelujah. But let us go to, I want to move to, uh, hallelujah. Yoel, chapter 2, verse 19. Concerning the restoration poured out unto Yahweh. And in his Ruah been poured out, the yes. dreams and the visions, yes. hallelujah, in the last days, Yisrael, we must have that. There must be a vision for us, Yisrael, to continue on. Because without a vision, there's no hope. There's no reason to continue. Yoel chapter 2, verse 19. It says, yes, Yahweh will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Yes, yeah. I will remove afar off from you the northern army. And I will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea. And his hinder parts towards the utmost sea. Yes. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up. Because he has gone, done great things. Verse 21, for not, O land, and be glad, and rejoice, Yisrael, for Yahweh will do great things. Hallelujah. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree bears her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, O you children of Zion. And rejoice in Yahweh your Abba, for he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Don't we desire the rain, Israel? Where will we be without the rain? And the floor shall be filled with wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will, what? Restore. To you the years that the locust has eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I have sent among you. So don't think, Israel, when there's things that are nibbling at us, that are biting at us, that are trying us, it's to exercise the moon It should not be a strange thing, because it comes from Almighty Yahweh. Judgment comes from Yahweh. Yes. Chastisement comes from Yahweh. Also does the blessings come from Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Yeah. And hallelujah, hallelujah. the name hallelujah. of Yahweh your Abba. Yeah. For he has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. We shall never be ashamed, Yisrael. Yeah. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Yisrael, and that I am Yahweh, your Abba. You know what Abba is? We say it is Father. We have been birthed by Yahweh. We have been clothed by Yahweh. He has supplied all of our needs, Yisrael. Don't you know that? That Yahweh is our Abba. And there is none else. And he says, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward. That I will pour out my ruah upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see what? Visions. Young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaid in those days will I pour out my ruah. And I will show wonders in the Shemayims and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh come. Hallelujah. The end time vision, Israel. This is what we shall see. This is what will happen. It will happen, Yisrael. So let us ascertain unto the blessings and the promises of Abba Yahweh that he will pour out his former and his latter rain in the last days, Yisrael. Because we need the vision. We need the understanding. 
We need those that will say, even though we don't see it, I see it. Yahweh has shown me, follow the Torah, follow me into the promises, into the land of promise. Hallelujah. 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 Told the Yahweh. I will stop there, Yisrael, for the time. But it's important for us as a people that we understand Yah's vision. It's not what we perceive, Yisrael. It's not what we perceive. But it's that which is revealed by his servant, the Nabi, the prophet. Hallelujah. So let us walk in the Torah. Was not Yahshua a high Kohen? Did he not also prophesy? He was also the Nabi, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Has he, did he stay the course even unto the end? Even unto the state, Yisrael, our example. So let us look unto this vision unto Yahshua, and I will promise you that everything will be all right. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, y'all, Yisrael. At this time, I'm going to ask this, that Reot Dawi will come up. Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful Zachin. Our leader that Yah is raising up among us as he has spoken unto us and fed us with manner that has come from Oh Maria. We are dismal people, you know that. We literally think that we really love Yah and we actually do not give a damn. We have been brought up under this damnable fictitious delusion of what we call love and it's not the love of Yah. This damn thing we call love is dysfunctional. It is not the Ahava of Almighty Yah. We think we possess it but we truly do not. It's a shame that a man would declare such simplicity of truth unto a nation of people and yet there is no rejoicing in the bosom of Yisrael. Yet we rejoice about some of the most damnable fr frivolous things. We get excited about some of the most damnable things that are not even worth spits. It is a shame. It is a dismal shame. And yet there was Icha one Nobi. I declare unto Yisra, yeah, I want to say a few things and we're going to close, but I'm going to say a few things, all right? I'm not going to pick it back on what he declared unto us because that was profound. I want that to kind of fill the void in our bosom. But I want to read something that is quite simple. You all love Yah, don't you? Yeah, you say it like that, don't you? We literally think we do. I, I want to read this. This is what Daiweed said. It is worth thinking about the book of ha uh, Yachahanan uh, and also the, the writings of Tehillim. I call them the most intimate writings of personal, uh, of Almighty Yah, the revelation of Yahshua than anything. And this is what he tells us to do. And yet we have, no, we have no compassion, no desire, because we literally think we love Yah and we don't. I want to read something before we close tonight. I won't tell you where it is. I will read it. Hallelujah. He says, I want you to berach, oh my Yah. He said, praise Yah. He says, in the tabernacle, in the sanctuary. He said, praise him in the firmament of his power. He said, I want you to praise him for his mighty acts. You praise him according to his excellence and his greatness. He said, praise him with the sound of the shofar. With the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sorcery and the harp. He said, praise him with the timbrel. He said, praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Yet we don't give a damn. We sit staunch. We sit staunch before Yah. You say that you are Israelite, you are a damn liar. He said, praise him with the shofar. Let me hear that, man. That's all right. He said, uh, I will dance to Yah. Praise Yah, Yisrael. He said, praise him in the dance. 
This is such a damnable generation of hypocrisy. We are a self-righteous people. We are walking in ways of our own indignance. We think we are right. We think we are proper. We present unto Yah what is right. And we are wicked as hell. Who do you think he's talking to when he's talking about the Russia? Sit down. It is his people. It is his people. They are the ones that are Russia. They're wicked. He's going to burn them to the gates of hell. Oh, Yah will not destroy his people. You don't know the book, man. He's going to purge him until he gets to the Bochir. Do you hear that? He's going to get to the Bochir. The Bochir. The Bochir. The Bochir. The Bochir. The elect, the choice one. The chosen ones. He's going to rid his house of the wicked. This damn self-righteous generation, you wonder why? The young men have no strength because hell. Uh, the elders of Zarkain, they're weak as hell. Uh, we have no strength. We have uh, no effervescence uh, of the flow of Yah from our bosom. Uh, tell the daughters of Tizion. Uh, where are the Ema today, the motherly ones uh, that operate in the power of the Ruach of Yah? We are damn shiftless, wicked people. You're cursing. Oh, don't give me that ball, all right? You got one of the most chala, one of the most damnable things in your home, that damn tell a lie. You're so hooked on it, you can't give it up. You're so damn inspired by it, uh, that Torah doesn't mean a damn thing. And that is the truth. You will spend hours in front of that damn beastly thing. You will not spend an hour in front of the Torah. You train your children's damn minds by it. Your minds are twisted. Your commands us to train them. You let the damn world train them. Where's the strength of the young men? They're effeminate. I take nothing back. And I'm not afraid or disappointed if you walk out on me. I was showing my ach a picture of all the folks that were here. Look at this little sparse crowd. Most men would get very discouraged, but I see the vision. That's something greater than what the perception is. I'm going to sell us something tonight. He said, this is what Yah commands us, and yet we don't operate this way, do we? He said, praise him in the dancing. He commands us. See, we say we love Yah, don't we? But this is a command. You say you love him, you're a damn liar. Well, I am, I am a Israelite, Nazarene, but he said, praise him in the dances. Yet your damn self-pride, your stubbornness, Hell, you wonder why our children are twisted? Because we have no truth. We're fictitious. We're false. We're pretenders. It's one thing. Let me say this. And I want to talk about love a little bit because Zachen Yeshua, give me a few moments. He's going to preach on the Father's love of the last time on tomorrow. You see this big man, Stara Mikhaya. Big man, isn't he? I know I'm big, but he's big too. Come up here, man. He has been coming here over the many years longer than anyone else. He has stood by me. He says, Sean, come here, man. It is one thing this big man has never told me. He's never told me I love you. Never. I look at you hypocrites. But his actions and the volume of his deeds are greater than any expression. He could tell me he loves me. He's a quiet, unassuming man. He has never embraced me and said, I love you so much. I've had many men to tell me that. He has not told me that. But his deeds and his actions are greater. Yet Yah tells us he loves us. And it doesn't mean a damn thing. I want to touch on that just a few moments tonight, all right? My friend. That's all right. You see, Yisra'ah, it's one thing that I've learned as a young lad. 
I know that there shall not be many that abide with me. I've watched during the many years. I'm not offended. I'm not taken awash or backwards. I know. And Ja'ul said, when I come among you, ach, there were none that stood with me. And your sure went to the stake. And we all would stand with him. Don't answer me. Something this simple we cannot do. He said, praise me, dance. I watched the little one, Zakin Yaramiya, his little taff, and how they were dancing. I said, young, the world teach the sons and daughters to shake their ass. The mother dressed their daughters like damn Jezebels, enticing, showing their ass. It's one thing that Yah gave you that beautiful shat, one of the breasts. And upon that breast, he put the dot, the nipple. And that women, damn, the first thing you see when you see them, the damn teddy, the cleavage. He put that there, the dot. Because it is the shape and the symbol of the purest of Yah's Ahava. That's why the shape of a woman's titty, her nipple, is different than any beast of the field. And that's what it represents. And that's why the women expose them because they're looking for love. And there is no love but the love of Yah. We have learned a false love. Listen, I came out not only a damnable dysfunctional house, but a dysfunctional environment. Well, my house, no, my friend, all of our homes were dysfunctional. Because if a house did not function in the order of the Torah, if our parents did not teach us the way of the Torah, it was a defunctional house, Yisrael. If they did not guide us through the discipline of the Torah, if we had Christmas and Halloween and Easter and all those damnable things, they brought us up wrong. They may have mean well, but they taught us wrong. And I know my environment based upon the principles of lies. And so what we call love, it is a, an emotional generation, but it's not based upon the principles of Yah. My parent did not teach me to love Yah. She did not teach me to order the Shabbat and to guard the Torah of Yah. She did not. She did not. My grandmother didn't teach me that. They taught me wrong. Oh, they meant well, but they were still wrong. They were still wrong. She did not teach me the beauty of Yah's aura and the covering of Yahshua. There was no man to show me the beauty of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we say we love him. We love Yah. Come on. Yah says to Yeremiah, I will give you a pastors. After my heart, Yisra'ya. And they shall feed you with knowledge and Torah. That's what we need. We need individuals like that, yeah. Yisra'ya. That's what we need. Hallelujah. We need men that flow in the Ru'ach of Yah. We need you, Zachin, the mothers, to stand with the beauty that is beyond any kind of beauty that the world calls. We need you, Beth, need the Tifra, the beauty of Yah. You need to be clothed, your mind need to be clothed with the beauty of Almighty Yah, with the, with the delight of Torah in your inward parts. I'm going to bring something out, Shabbat. You may get up and walk out, but that's all right. Zachin Yesha will soften the blow tomorrow, and that he would pat our buttocks for Shabbat. I'm going to read just a few things, and we're going to close and have. Some wonderful things to eat. How about that? Yeah, but rock you that have joined us. He said, praise him with the timbrels. He said, with dances. He said, praise him with string instruments and organs. He said, praise him upon the loud cymbals. Yah says, praise him on the high sounding cymbal. Then he says this. Let everything that have react. Of God, brach him, and the reason we cannot brach him because we have not the life or the edu, the testimony of Yahshua. We can talk an excellent game, but it doesn't mean a damn thing to all Maria. It doesn't mean anything. And so, what we constitute as love, it has been this this false, deluded thing 
that we think it's love, but it's not love, Yisra'ya. It is an emotional attachment that we have, but it's not the love of Yah. We cannot possess that. Yah said this. Let me show you what love is. We have compartmentalized love, what we call love. Well, these are your sons and your daughters. These are your relatives. You love them, but me, uh, it's a different thing. Uh, that's not the love of Yah. For he commands us to love him with all of our mind, uh, all of our nephesh, with all of our strength. Uh, and he says, I show you a commandment just like that. Uh, that you love your neighbor. He did not tell me to love. I love my wife uh, like I love your wife. Uh, I will honor her in the way that Yah commands me. And I will honor her in the way I would honor you because he commands me to love you. She is my wife. And I will honor her and love her the same way. It is no compartmentalizing of Yah's love. It is one. It is Yikot's. And so how could we have love when we did not know the principles of the Torah? How could my grandmother teach me that when she knew nothing about Yah? And so we walk in this fictitious delusion. We learn from the whole well. She taught us you love everybody. It was a lie, Yisrael. We don't give a damn about Yisrael. That's why we cannot. Oh, if this is my natural brother, I can deal with him. But you are not my brother. You are not my kinsman. How deluded is the mind of Yisrael. That's why we are sick, as he says, the word sick, he says, we are khali, uh, we are dressed with sickness. We are khali, that our minds are sick from the crown of our heads, even down to the sole of our feet. We are sick when we can't dance before Yah. We are sick when we can't praise Him. We are sick when we can't get up and offer unto Him an offering uh, that is beautiful, Yisra'ya. We are sick, Yisra'ya, and the world of... Uh, they teach their daughters how to shake their buttocks, their sons how to rap and do everything. And yet we don't teach our young men and women how to dance and how yeah. to love Yah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I was sent to Akhaj. I did not meet my natural father until I was 53 years old. It is one thing that I came away from when I met the man. We look like identical twins. There's only one thing I came away when I left his house. I was sad that I ever met him. My life, I wish I had never met the man in all of my life because I was sad that I met this man. I have nothing against him, but I was sad that I, I was 53 years old when I met the man. Never seen him a day in my life. But when I laid eyes on the man, I knew he was my father. Gap, teeth like mine. Peak in his head just like mine. And we are built identically the same. The same. I look like him. His wife looked at the picture and said, Oh my, look at this man. That's your son. I was sad. I was sad. Yet Yah has met us here tonight. He has caused the Zakin to rise up by the nurturing of his Ru'ak. But that's all right. I got something for you on Shabbat, all right? You may want to get out of here while you got a chance, all right? Hallelujah. We don't know what the love of Yah is. We think we love him. I often say to people, do you love Yah? Oh, I love Yah. I trust him. You, you trust Yah? Oh, I know we would say we trust him. We are an arrogant people. We think we possess everything. But then I said, Yah said he would give you re'ach, a leaders, after his heart. Do you trust his heart? Well, I don't trust nobody. Well, you don't trust Yah. He said, I will give you those kinds of men. And they shall feed you with knowledge. They shall feed you with wisdom and understanding of Torah. That's what he said. There was only one Nabi to speak. And to tell them the truth. It is easily to beguile this wicked generation. That's why the T.D. Jakes and the Benny Hens and men like that flourish. That's why. Because this is a very gullible generation. 
I recall as a young lad, they had what they call the pet rock. And the fool that gave the fool the pet rock, he made millions of dollars on that. Became rich. Where is the beauty of the Zakin? Where's the beauty of the mothers in this assembly today? Where's the beauty of the men of strength? Where's their valiant effort for all Maria? Where is it, Yisraya? Tell me where it is. Oh, there, there are places you can go for tabernacle that is all fun and play. That's what it is. There's not a sincere devotion to Yah. The women dress like Jezebel's, that's just the truth. The men dress effeminate. Hallelujah. And don't tell me that's not part of Yah's protocol for Yisrael. If I came in here with a dress on, what would you think? I will, my friend. If I came in here with a dress on, uh, what would you think? If I came in here with a dress on, what would you think? I was in the prison house preaching to the prisoners. Uh, and I said to them, if I came in here with a dress on, uh, what would you think? One stood up and said, you'll be a faggot, man. That's what you are. And we will take care of you in essence. Come on, Yisrael. We need to dress our minds with the purity of Yah's Torah. Hallelujah. You bow the design, you dress Kadosh. Your titty nipple, your dad is the seed of Yah's love. You don't let any man see that, Yisraya. I despise that the first thing I see with the bath is the cleavage of her titties. It's open. That should not be. Shut your titties up. My Isha and I go and I say, woman, let me see that. All right. I say, that's a little too tight on your ass, woman. Take it off. I don't want you wearing that. You don't need to draw no attention. I'm the man. That's all you need. I will, man. They have polluted our daughters. Rob them. The parents dress their daughters like Jezebels. It's a damn shame. It's an abomination before Yah. They put them on this worldly attire. They should not do this. The boys walking around with skin tight, skinny jeans like little faggots. That's not of Yah. I worked at one of the largest corporations in the world. I worked at IBM. And that was a protocol. There was a protocol for the women to dress. It was an unwritten law, but they dressed that way. They knew better too. Whether she was a manager, engineer, she dressed a certain way. And that was a protocol for the men too. I worked there, I was growing my beard. This man walks up to me, George Clay, George Roach. And he says, Dave, what are you doing? As much as I want to grow my beard. Come on. So what did I do? I quit. And the first thing I did, I grew my beards. Don't tell me about the beards, all right? Don't come that way with me, all right? We are people that strain at a damn nut. And we swallow the camel. Every kind of wicked thing. Let me read a few verses and I'm going to close, all right? I want to read this concerning the love of Yah. Hallelujah. It says here in, just listen. It says, herein is love, not that we love Yah, but that He loved us. And He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our chata, our sins. Again, He says, and this mitzvah have we from Him that we should love Yah... That we, that he who loves Yah, he loves his, ach also, he loves his brother. So we love Yah, we love our brother. We say we love Yah, but we really don't love Yah. Because we love Yah, we love our brother. Well, how do I know I have the love of Yah? This, by this, by this action. We know that we love the children of Yah. When we love Yah and we keep his mitzvah. We keep the commands of Yah. That's a command for us to enter into his gates with, gates with praises and into his courts with todah. That's the command, Yisrael. Yeah. That we offer up the offering of Torah and we sit before Yah all stymied. That's an abomination. Yeah. 
but yet we say we we love him and we obey him. We don't shemach when one shemach. It is to hear with uh, complicity of obedience. What obeys God with a great delight that he grants us the privilege uh, and the opportunity uh, to do what he commands us. When he says on Tabernacle, they when they got the ball of the magnificent tree from the first to the seventh day, they waved it before Yah. Hell, we get we we have complications with that. Well, that's the old covenant. Well, you get immersed in water too, don't you? How many of you have been immersed in water? That's just as important as this. Obedience is better than any sacrifice. Just obey what he says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he grants us an event like this. Uh, we should have brought fruit abundantly. Yeah. And it's not the offering of monetary offering. Uh, it is the fruit of Torah. Yeah. It is from the voice uh, that cries unto Yah. Yeah. With great ecstasy that we're glad that he grants us this opportunity yeah. to come to his Simoad. For the end time, the end gathering. Hell, we don't even teach our sons and our daughters and our children for 900 years. Yisrael did not keep the feast. Until he placed it in the heart of the Nobi to correct this house. We teaching them a dysfunctional mentality. One that is delusional. We're teaching them uh, habitual habits uh, that are wrong, Yisraya. It's a damn shame. It's a sin before Yah. We train them up in the way of Yah, he said, and they shall not depart while we're departing. We teach them duplicity. We say one thing and we don't do it. It's wrong, Yisraya. We're going to stand in the judgment seat of Yah. And we are people that say we love Yah. We are people that say we got great affection for him. We say that. We say that. We don't know what love is. We don't know the power of love. Hallelujah. You will find out if you really have the Ahab of Omar Yah. We have the sensual thing that is based upon a visual perception. But it's not the love of Omar Yah. We don't love Yisrael. We despise each other. Hell is all right, you can live with your natural family, but what about the family, the true family of Yah? We abide in our own, we don't want to be around Yisrael, Yah, but you can live around every kind of freak, every kind of faggot, every kind of dog, every kind of wicked thing there is, you can live uh, with them. But when it comes to the people of Yah, we have a disdain. Well, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, it's an occult. Well, uh, what is the world? It's an occult. It's twisted. That's the truth. We bathe our mind in it continuously. He brought his people out of the system. And he put them in Gosha, even in slavery. Even in slavery. That's what he did. Because of our sins. The Zokin, as he said, Yah is going to kill his people. And if you think that Yah is not going to do us damage, we will find our own Shabbat. He's going to bring them down to the gate of hell. And he's going to save just that bochir, boch, bochir, the select choice of the promise of Abraham. His seed of promises in Yitzchak and Yaakov. His seed of promise. Because Abraham had another son. Did he not? Yes. By his handmaid. What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? All right. There was not the promise in the flesh. It is the promise in the Ruach of Yaakov, of Yishkat and Yaakov. He's going to say the remnant of that seed, Israel. It is time that we awaken out of our drunkenness and our sleep. It is time that we do what Yah commands us. This is so simple that he commands us. He said, lift me up. Come on, dance. He said, praise me on everything. And he said, come on. Teach your sons and your daughters. That's what he said. We will go to the extreme, just like our Zakin said. We take pride that our sons can play a little basketball. Hell, that's not a skill. Anybody can bounce a ball. 
They can. Anybody can talk a basketball if they just practice. I was a 225, 30-pound man could bounce, could dunk a basketball. Come on. Anybody can do that. But we cannot praise you. And say to you elderly ones, you need to get up and begin to show the example. The old men teach the young men how to live circumspectly before you. It's a shame, Yisra'ya. It saddens me what I see today. I hear the verbiage of men. It's... It makes me so sad. I say, Yah, help me. Judge me. Judge me. Correct me in thy judgment and not in your anger. At least you bring me to know. It's sad. We must be genuine. If there's one thing that you will find from this man, I'm real. I'm real in everything I do. I'm not a pretender. I'm not a talker. I don't talk when it comes to saying what I want to do and how I'm going to do it. I just get it done. I've always been that way. And that's the truth. So we must, as a nation of Yisra'ya, we have learned a dysfunctional love. We need to get rid of that. It's not the love of Yah. Because you love this one differently, Yah tells you nowhere in Torah to love your mother any greater than my mother. He says to honor. That's what the Mitzvah says, to honor. Kabot. Your Emu and your Avat. And Yah, your Abba shall give you, your days shall be long upon the land that Yah grants unto Yisra'ya. He did not tell us to love anyone. His love is the same. The way we love him, we love each other. The way we care for Torah, that's how we care for each other. Don't you want the Torah in your bosom? Then we should want each other in our bosom. Is that a grave concern for the Torah being in our hearts? Uh, then the concern of Yisra'ya should be in our hearts, Yisra'ya. That's the way it should be. And the world has taught us to be wickedly selfish. That we just don't care. We really don't even give a damn. I know we think we do, but we really do not. Yah's love is not compartmentalized. There's no compartments for this kind of love and for that kind of love and that kind of love. His love is pure. It is just pure, Yisra'ya. And something is wrong with it. It saddens me what I see. It saddens me what I see. It saddens me. We love him in there. There is no praise from our loins for him. Something is wrong. When they kicked that ball off on Yom Rishon at that stadium in Charlotte, the grounds tremble. The people get there before the game starts. We as a nation, we are not in any, we have no effervescence for Yah. I will never forget when I was in Kenya. And I watched the people as they, I was in Kenya, East Africa. And I was there, I was just as bold and brazen with ignorance, as ignorant as I am today. And I watched the people as they serenaded in on their time. So the meeting starts at 7, you get it at 7.30. And I will never forget I said to the pastor, I said, look, man, it starts at this time. We will be obedient when it comes to the world. We will get to the job on time and before time. When it comes to God, we don't give a damn. And I got up and I rebuked the entire congregation. I rebuked them all. I rebuked them for the way they let the youngins act. I don't give a damn about your traditions and your customs. I rebuked them openly before all uh, and from that night on, every night, all the youngers were sitting across the front, quietly, their faces grazed down, like the glow of light on them. But it took that. It took that. We are slothful about the business of God. That's why we are poor, spiritually. You won't do that on the job, will you? He comes to Yah, he is secondary in our thoughts. It's so sad. That's why enter in at the straight and the narrow gate. For there be many or few mi'ads. Mi'ad means littleness, the little or the littleness of the few. 
And Yah said, there be few there be that go therein. Just me adds. Just a small fragment of the whole. Just few. Just few will abide or go through the gate that this man opened tonight. Come on, Yisrael. Because we don't have the vision. We can't see beyond this corrupt thing we call flesh. Hallelujah. Yeah, Barak, you all that have joined us. Let me say to us that are here, listen. This is one of my pet peeves. I know that we drive distance, you that have come. But let us do things on time. If we have breakfast at 9, and it's one thing about the community structure here, whether you eat or not, come to breakfast. You don't have to eat. Come. Because that is how we assist and help each other. We don't sit in our homes. You come to breakfast. Dinner starts at 3. We all come. Service starts at 7. Get here. On time, Yisrael. So we do all things on time. We used to sing, He may not come when you want to, but he's right on time. So we must be on Yah's time. We must be on Yah's time. Would I rebuke them, my Ema, for their slothfulness, for their way? Every night, I was there nearly 30 days preaching. Every night, they were on time. And I'm talking about people do not have the comfort. They would drive from hundreds of miles. So they had to catch the bus a day in advance in a country like that. We heard that this man was going to be here. And so we have traveled 200 miles to travel 200 miles in Kenya. It's not like traveling 200 miles here. You understand? It's a difficult task. You understand? And especially with those that have just a little money. And they came far and near to a man that reproved, rebuked, Oh, they did some things that I commanded them. They may have gone back. But the women were delighted that they didn't have to carry the water three or four miles. Because the men carried the water. I don't care what their customs are. Their customs are wrong. It's not the right. Y'all command the woman to be the keeper of the house, to be chased. She keep to teach the children, to govern them, to teach the daughters, uh, to bring them up in the wisdom of Yah. And by the sweat of a man's face, he supplies. Well, you don't have a job. Oh, I tell you what. Working in a cool building, an air-conditioned building at IBM, that was gravy. You get out here in one of these gardens, and you hold for about six, seven hours. And the bogs crawl again, the sweat profusely. Ah, at the end of the day, you eat your meal with very carefulness. It's a beautiful thing. At the end of the day, when you sit down, you're able to rinse your body. You delight in that. You understand? And I'm a work hog. You understand? No. I work. And I like to work. I work. And I love to work. The harder, the better for me. You know, I don't play around. Hallelujah. That's why we're in the condition we're in. Tell our hearts. That's why we're in the shape we're in. It's sad. 50 year old man. When I get 60, I want to be able to run. That's right. I want to be able to do what I'm doing today. And I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. Come on, Yisraya. I said to Oxymion, I said, man, 69 years old, his brother passed. I said, ma. Wow, you 57, don't have that many more years if I get 69. You're going to die. And that's a fact. We're going to die. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. And I will vow the vow of the Nazarene unto you too. You understand? I'm a Nazarite. You understand? Be Yah rich, you all. Listen, Yisrael, we have scheduled the only morning we ask now, Yah Ashabat, if you don't want to come to breakfast, that's fine. 
don't do us like that. Come on time because we have to clean up, get things ready. Come, sit down, eat. And then we remove ourselves so the Yachot can get things ready for the service and all that. Don't do like that. Come on. If someone shows you kindness, then do that. So be on time. That's vitally important. I've watched over the years that people come. Breakfast at 9. They come at 9.30. Where's the breakfast? And they be, Come on, man. Look, don't do that. Don't do us like that. That's not how you do people. Get up, man. Come. I don't eat, so what? You don't have to eat, but come and enjoy the presence of Yisrael. Enjoy one another. You don't have to eat. I, I very seldom eat at times in the dining hall. May take it home. Go get me some greens, some fried chicken. Bring it all to me. Hallelujah. I use that as a metaphor. So let us do things on a timely basis. Is Yahshua coming on time? Were the five wise ready? Were the five foolish ready? They did not have all in their vessel, did they? So let us stop that. Let us stop that. I had one man last year come all the way from Canada to come here. And the first thing the pig began to do was complain. I said, get off of these grass. Man, take this fool out of here. You don't come here not to participate. I don't care who you are. You come to participate. That's how you do this wrong, Yisrael. Come on. We're part of the body. Are we not one body? Ichat in Yeshua. That's how we do it, Yisrael. And that's the right way to do it. You don't have to bring anything. You don't have to bring no offering. We do this because Yah has granted us the ability to do it. He has given us much. He's given us enough food if we buy not a drop and we can't raise nothing. We can eat for the next five years. Maybe one meal. That's what many of us need to get to. You let the stores and the cities. It's going to snow. Hell, they wipe it out. You let the hurricanes come through and see what happens. He wants his people to learn how to love each other. We cannot learn how to love each other. This is how all men will know you, my disciplined ones. Not that you love the world, that the love you have one toward each other. That we love being around each other. We love to embrace each other. We love living with each other. It's sad. The world of their own. Now that's not, that, I can give that to the, the agapo. The, not the agape, but the agapo. The agapo in the Greek is a, is a sensual fleshly type attachment. The agapo, the agapo. Yeah, they know how to love their own. But they don't know how to love in the Ruach of Almighty Yah because Yah is love. And if we have Yah in us, His power, we know how to love. We all have a dysfunctional love. We all have been reared with a dysfunctional identity of what love is. We've all done that. Stay away from those children, baby. My baby. Oh, he will never do that just like this Zachin said. We don't think our children... Because we think highly of them. We should esteem others more highly than we esteem ourselves. We should look upon the welfare of others more than we look. And this is a place in this kind of living you that are listening. Well, well, we can try to do that. We can try to do that. I was saying to my uh, heart, Tesna, I said, there's only one person I have met to come here and see this life. And one of the young men... One of the young men, he was in his, his residency as a medical doctor. Very handsome man, regal, beautiful man. What mother would not want a son-in-law like that? He said, the women are crazy, Riyak. And he came to ask me, what do I do, man? Please tell me. I understand the medical profession. I know what we do. And I don't want to do that. And they went back, to, went back to Buffalo, New York, and the frigid. I've seen what they have done. They bought two houses next to each other. And they all moved in there. They have guns and everything. I'm not going along with the Jesus talk. That's it. That's the only group I've ever seen do that. 
They moved there. They had two houses. They have gardens. They, they live together. Each one got a room. They teach the children. They grow food. And they work together right there. That's nothing good about a biological attachment. They have done that. Maybe one day I may get up there to see them. Judah, uh, my uh, Judah, he'll call me every now and then. Just said, how are you doing? But I'm not going to strengthen their doctrine. What they're doing, I appreciate that. That's what Yah wants. We got to learn how to love. We have not been taught how to love. So we don't know how to love. We think we love. This man never tells me he loves me. He's been coming here longer than anyone. He has. He has never told me he loved me. Never. I recall this issue calling in one night. She said, you know, because Yah never says that because he said, it's become such a false expression that has no meaning today because everyone says it. He has never said that. But it's been more than kind to me in ways that it's beyond speech. Every feast day he's here, a great strength and a beauty to me. Every feast day. And even though he was here, his brother died. He did not pack up his things and leave. He's still here. There's nothing he can do. Let the dead bury the dead. Put him in the grave. Let them have their folly. And that's the truth. May I yeah. enrich you all. Listen again. Tomorrow breakfast is what time? Breakfast is at 9, not 9, 15, not 9, 30, 9 a.m., not p.m. And then the, the service will start at 11 Okay, service will start at 10 a.m. Because uh, our Zachin Yosha, he's going to preach, teach to us out in the plaza. So we're going to sit there in the plaza. It'll be beautiful. We have everything set up. The ark will set that up. He's going to preach to us on the Father's love. We welcome him, our Zachin Yosha, Yabarak, he and his family. And then we're going to have a great fellowship. I'm going to cook. I have some Caribbean jerk uh, marinating. I have some chicken spicy i have some bob uh, uh, i love to cook you understand it shall be excellent and it is our own beef we're going to have some some chicken sausage lamb sausage tonight well we have some of our lamb goats meats and deer that are Shimri back there, he is our hunter, him and Yosipi, and they're trying to break our other Achen. But he knocks them down. He, he takes them out, believe me. And so we made a beautiful sausage. You that eat meat, and if you don't, that's all right. Just don't eat it. You don't have to tell me. I love meat. I like fried chicken. I like fried fish. I don't want it baked. I want it fried. You understand? Yes, sir, Yosef. I want it fried, even fried, whatever I want it fried, fried cornbread. I want it break. I love it so much that I'm scared of it. That's why I don't eat it, because I like it. I like fried chicken. I don't want no baked steak. You can fry the steak. My mother did, and they were right. Fried onions, French fries. I love them, but I prefer eating the baked potato every now and then. French fries once in a while, just once in a while. Have me a trash day once in a while. Huh? That's right. I'll eat some potato chips or something. May I barack you, all you that have joined us may enrich you. Let us do all things on time because he is coming on time. And let us, Yisraya, this is what this time is about, that Yah has blessed us much. We really learn how to really care for each other. I mean, really get the love of, of Yah in our hearts right. We need to really get that right, Yisraya. We're missing that. As a nation, a people, we're missing it big time. We are. So let us get that in our hearts right. Come on. Ah, you see, Pia, we, he's going to play our song. Hallelujah. We're going to rejoice in Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm happy tonight, as Zachain said, who are happy? The word happy in one, in the Arabic or the Hebraic, it, it, you can say esha, esh, esha. It is to have the wealth of Yah. It is to be exceedingly glad and happy. 
And I'm happy. You know why? Just to be alive, man. Breath in my body. I'm not complaining about one thing. I am alive. I can breathe. And there's nothing in this world that's going to make me so miserable. I don't care what it is. Even if this little thing walked out on me, that's, uh, I would cry like a baby, but that's all right. I'll get over that. She's not going anywhere. It's too long. And that's the truth. He has blessed my ish, Sean and I, for many years, nearly 35 years. He has blessed us. The only woman I know, the only woman I want to know, this woman. She's been kind to me. She's loved me. She's been a friend, and I appreciate that. She's been a friend to me. I mean a genuine friend kind and the beauty about it she knows how to be quiet when I said leave me alone okay see it's a quietness that turn away my wrath yet yeah, don't talk back to me just don't do that you don't do that you got my love you can take advantage of me it's only when you try to rise up against me you know you're in trouble truth so it's just easy just not to do that, isn't it? Ah, you can, you can use me. Hallelujah. Yes, I want to teach the young men how to love their wives. I want them to understand the beauty of, of our relationship and friendship. I don't say much, but I want men to understand that. I want them to see it. I go places because she, you all see how she walks with a limp, don't you? You see? Stand up. Come on. She had a fractured tibia. Come on. You don't need to try to make it. No, she tries to hide it. Huh? Yeah. I put it right here. Come on. That's it. Don't worry about nothing. I got you. Hmm? I support you. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody messing with that. You understand? And you would think that people do not comprehend that. They do. They see that. They do. You understand? We as men, we must love our wives as your sures love the assembly. We must be kindly affectionate, deal with them, knowing that they are the weaker vessel. That's what he says. With knowledge. And we deal with them that way. Who can find a virtuous woman? For prices far above rubies. The heart of a husband does safely trust in her. And she will do him no evil all the days. You tell me I can trust her and I can't trust a man. But I can trust her and I can't trust a man. I can trust her. Her husband's heart, Badak, trusts with confidence, with great delight he can trust in her. And yet I cannot Badak him. I cannot Badak him. Come on, Yisra. We got a mess. Let us stand to our feet. Let us get... To the appointed place on time. We're going to sing this song. We didn't write it down, did we? But that's all right. It's easy to sing. Come on. Let there be love. You strike out. So let there be love. Share among God. Let there be love. In our lives.
on the last one. Come on. Come on, go over there. Let that be love. Share the more love. Oh, yes. Let that be love. Hallelujah. In our life, may now your love sweep this house, cause us the Yahweh to arise, give us the fresh understanding of brotherly. Nobody. Come on, go to someone else. Come on, Gisraya. Come on, turn to someone you didn't come with. Come on. So let there be love shed among us. Let there be love in our lives. May now your love sweep this house. to do that, isn't it? It shows us what's really in us. Hallelujah. We really don't have what we think we have. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim, you that have joined us. We greet you all in your Yeshua's name, O Mariam. For it's by the excellence of your Ruach and your Yeshua HaMashiach. We rock you for all things. We ask you grant your people shalom and guide my Zachin Shimri and the Ima and his issue as they travel. We pray for those that have joined us on the live broadcast and those that have come to be with us in this time on Yomo and we ask that you rock your people, your berachaya, your blessings of riches rest upon them. Forgive us of our sins for we are a people that have sinned egregiously against you. We ask you to pardon us of all of our iniquity, our own. The blessed assurance of the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. 
wash us and cleanse us and guide us in this day we ask in your surest name we shall go from this place and rejoice forevermore and the blessed assurance of the name of your sure Messiah we cry hallelujah 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 hallelujah